Hello friends, today we will discuss ultrasound guided adductor canal block or subsartural block. This is my introduction. The objective of my presentation are to discuss the relevant anatomy of the femoral nerve and its continuous branch that is saphenous nerve, preoperative assessment and preparation, indication and contraindication of adductor canal block, complications and side effect of adductor canal block, prerequisite of the block, equipment and logistic required, ultrasound setting, how to make position for the block, conduct of the adductor canal block, intraoperative care, postoperative care, and clinical tips. Relevant anatomy of the femoral nerve. The femoral nerve is the largest branch of the lumbar plexus arising from the dorsal division of ventral rami of nerve roots lumbar second, lumbar third, and lumbar four. The lumbar nerves exit from the neural foramina into the mass of the swast muscle. Femoral nerve formation occurs in the belly of the swast muscle. It then emerges from the lower lateral border of the swast muscle. Femoral nerve then passes down between the swast and iliacus bellies and it supplies motor branches to iliacus and pectinus muscle. Femoral nerve then passes to the femoral triangle beneath the inguinal ligament at approximately its mid position. In femoral triangle, femoral nerve lies outside the femoral sheath. It is not the part of femoral sheath and is invested in two layers of the fascia iliaca and lies on the iliosphous muscle. At femoral crease, femoral nerve spreads into anterior and posterior divisions. Posterior division continues as saphenous nerve in the femoral triangle. Saphenous nerve travels in the femoral triangle lateral to the femoral artery and lateral to the vein. The formula of VAN applies here also, means when is the medial most, artery is in between and the nerve is lateral. At apex of the femoral triangle, it enters the adductor canal. This is the diagram showing formation of femoral nerve. The swast muscle is removed to understand the divisions. The formation of femoral nerve occurs in the belly of swast muscle which is removed in this diagram. It is formed from lumbar second, third, and fourth. The femoral nerve splits into anterior and posterior divisions. The anterior division supplies sartorius muscle and gives two cutaneous branches. The medial cutaneous nerve of thigh and the intermediate cutaneous nerve of thigh. Lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh comes as a separate nerve. The posterior division supplies quadriceps muscle and continues down in femoral triangle in the adductor canal as saphenous nerve. And these are nerve to rectus femoris, which also supplies the hip joint, nerve to vastus medialis, which also supplies knee joints, and we need to block this nerve in the adductor canal block. The third nerve is nerve to vastus lateralis, and fourth is nerve to vastus intermediaris. All four bellies of the quadriceps femoris are supplied by the posterior branch. Then it also gives one cotonous branch, inflapatellar cotonous branch, which supplies the medial side of the leg up to the big toe. This is the diagram showing branches from the femoral nerve. It is formed from L234. There are two muscular branches from the trunk before passing the inguinal ligament. These are nerve to iliacus muscle and nerve to pectinus muscle. At the crease, it divides into posterior and anterior branches. The anterior gives three branches, which are one muscular and two cutaneous nerve. The muscular nerve is nerve to sartorius and cutaneous are medial cutaneous nerve of thigh and intermediate cutaneous nerve of thigh. The posterior division of the femoral nerve gives branches to the four bellies of the quadriceps muscle. These are nerve to rectus femoris, nerve to vastus lateralis, nerve to vastus intermedius and vastus medialis. And then continues down as a saphenous nerve. Adductor canal or subsartoral block anatomy. Adductor canal block is a motor sparing block. It is preferred over femoral nerve block when we want to mobile patient after knee surgery or below knee surgery. After giving motor nerves to the quadriceps muscle, saphenous nerve enter the adductor canal. The location of the adductor canal is located in middle one third of the thigh, medial side. Adductor canal connects apex of the femoral triangle with popliteal fossa through a hiatus in the adductor magnus muscle. Adductor canal lies under the sartorius muscle. The boundaries of the adductor canal are 
anteriorly, that is roof, formed by the sartorius muscle, which is lined by the thick fibrous vasoadductor membrane, which joins vastus medialis and adductor longus muscle. In between sartorius muscle and vasoadductor membrane lies subsartorial plexus. Lateral boundary of adductor canal is formed by the vastus medialis muscle. Posterior medial boundary is formed by the adductor longus and magnus muscle. The length of adductor canal is average 10 and it could be 7 and maybe more 11 12 cm. This is the diagram showing adductor canal anatomy and location. Adductor canal lies medially in the middle one third of thigh covered by sartorius muscle. That's why it's called subsartorial block. You can see the connection between femoral triangle and popliteal fossa. This adductor canal connects femoral triangle and popliteal fossa. The content of the adductor canal are femoral artery which travels full length of the adductor canal from the femoral triangle to the popliteal fossa. Same way the femoral vein traverses full length of the adductor canal from femoral triangle to the popliteal fossa. While saphenous nerve enters adductor canal in the later part of the canal, it enters in the roof of the canal in the distal part of the adductor canal. The posterior obturator nerve enters roof in the distal part of the canal. The anterior obturator nerve usually unites saphenous nerve. Nerve to vastus medialis leaves the canal in the distal part. It is above the vasoadductor membrane, which needs piercing of the vasoadductor membrane. The seventh content is medial cutaneous nerve of thigh. Subsartor plexus is formed by three nerves: saphenous nerve, medial cutaneous nerve of thigh, and anterior division of the obturator nerve. This is a diagram showing adductor canal in transverse section or cross section. We can see three muscles which are vastus medialis, adductor longus and sartorius muscle. The most important landmark in the adductor canal is sartorius muscle and femoral artery. We can see the femoral vein, artery and nerve in a sequence and we can see clearly this pyramidal shape adductor canal. Subsartorial plexus is visible in this diagram. Vasoadductor membrane is also visible, connecting the vastus medialis and adductor longus, this green one. Preoperative assessment and preparation. As routine, we take detailed history, we do physical and general examination, we request for labs, do risk assessment and ASA grading of the patient. We optimize comorbids if present and prepare patient for the procedure. We take written consent, we confirm NPO, side marking is done in holding area. Indication of femoral nerve block. The block is given for analgesia for surgery on knee, especially total knee replacement and a motor sparing block is required. The second indication are knee ligaments reconstruction. Third is below knee amputation with sciatic nerve block. Surgery on lower leg and foot in combination with sciatic nerve block. Saphenous when stripping and harvesting. Surgery on medial side of the leg and ankle with sciatic nerve block. The contraindications are same as routine for other blocks. That's patient refusal, non-cooperation from the patient side, anticoagulant therapy, or patient has a coagulopathy. Local infection at the site of uh, injection can preclude the block. Allergy to the drugs or neuropathy. Complication and side effect of adductor canal block. There could be partial block or failed block can occur. Upward spread can occur to block the muscular branches to the quadriceps and it becomes femoral triangle block. If the drug spreads down through the hiatus in the adductor magnus muscle, it can cause sciatic block or popliteal block. Infection can occur which needs a sterile technique. Intramuscular hematoma can occur. Bleeding and bruising at the puncture site can occur. Intraneural injection and nerve damage can occur. Intravascular injection can occur. The drug is lost in the artery. If it goes into the vein, it can cause local anesthetic systemic toxicity. All perivascular technique carries risk of intravascular injection. Allergic reaction to the local anesthetic can occur. Prerequisite of ultrasound guided adductor canal block. The block is executed in an area designated for regional block. All facilities of general anesthesia must be available in this area. A sterile technique must be used. We need bright light source. We need 18 gauge working intravascular axis. We need all external monitor to be attached and working. All resuscitation drugs must be in hand including lipid solution. 
we need trained assistant for ultrasound guided regional anesthesia general anesthesia facilities must be available in this area equipment and logistic required for electric canal block we need ultrasound machine with a high frequency linear array transducer we need ultrasound probe cover and ultrasound gel we need p bevel insulated echogenic needle of 50 to 80 mm length we need sterile gloves and cleaning solution we need sterile towel to isolate the area we need 5 cc syringes with local anesthetic for puncture site analgesia we also need pressure measuring syringe with tubing to avoid intraneural injection we need sedative analgesic drug like midazolam or fentanyl ketamine if required facilities to convert patient to general anesthesia must be available ultrasound setting We keep ultrasound machine on contralateral side in front of our eyes. We need a high frequency linear probe, 14, 16, 18, exam type with a high frequency. We use in-plane technique and out-of-plane technique can be used safely in this patient. We identify orientation of the needle with the probe. We keep the angle of needle with the probe at less than 30 degrees. We can manipulate pressure to decrease angle. Best views obtained when needle is kept parallel to the probe. And in this block, it is possible to see the whole length of needle and keep the needle parallel to the probe. We use part to obtain best view. We can see the next slide to describe the part. Needle length required is 50 to 80 mm in an average weight person. Depth setting will be 2 to 4 cm in a 70 kg person. This is a diagram to manipulate the pressure in which the angle is reduced from 65 to 25. This is the part maneuvering in which we apply four techniques which include pressure which is useful in this technique at the canal block. We do alignment to move the probe up and down lateral and medial and we can rotate the needle which is R and we can tilt the needle to have a waist view. making position for adductor canal or subsartorial canal block we elevate the bed up to avoid bending of the operator we keep patient in supine position hip is slightly abducted and externally rotated and the knee is slightly flexed ultrasound machine is kept on opposite side in front of the operator operator will work from same side of the patient routine pillow support to relax neck muscle we place transducer at middle side of the mid thigh transversely this is a diagram showing the position of the adductor canal block the operator is standing on the same side of the block in this diagram he is also using the pressure to optimize the angle this is anatomy of the subsartorial canal block we can see clearly the roof of the block is sartorius muscle and we can see the femoral artery vein and nerve Femoral nerve is lateral to the femoral artery and we can see the adductor longus magnus muscle and vastus medialis. Conduct of the adductor canal block at mid thigh. Sign in and site marking is done in preoperative holding area. We make appropriate position of the block. We do sonar anatomy before preparing and draping the block area. We use a sterile preparation of the area and isolate area with towels. we use puncture site analysis we identify orientation of the probe sides we put ultrasound machine on medial side of thigh in the middle one third with ultrasound examination we first locate pulsating anechoic femoral artery at the middle and medial side of thigh practically we trace the femoral artery from the inguinal ligament down in the femoral triangle and then entering in the femoral canal and down to the full length of the adductor canal We identify femoral vein which is posterior to the femoral artery at 6 o'clock position by decreasing the pressure on the probe. Femoral vein is easily compressible. Seferous nerve is a hyperechoic structure lateral to the femoral artery in the proximal adductor canal. In the middle adductor canal it passes over femoral artery means comes in the center. Then it moves to the medial side of the femoral artery. After that, saphenous nerve pierces the roof of adductor canal in the middle third of the adductor canal. After that, saphenous nerve pierces the roof of the adductor canal in middle third of adductor canal.
On the top of the ultrasound image, Sartor's muscle is visible as trapezoid or boat shaped structure, which makes the roof of the tetra canal. The little boundary of the adductor canal is formed by the vastus medialis muscle. The needle is advanced from lateral to medial penetrating vastus medialis muscle and directed towards facial plane between vastus medialis and sartorius, lateral to the femoral artery and nerve. With hydro dissection, the adductor canal space is open and local anesthetic solution is injected after expiration. A solution is given in increments under direct urea. To avoid intravascular injection, we aspirate every time we inject and we also observe the drug or solution passing in the planes. To avoid intranormal injection, we use following techniques. Number one, we stop injection when patient complains of pain. First few drops of the injections are given very slowly. If there is no pain, we can give more solution. When there is a high pressure in the syringe, because we are using special tubing and syringes which shows high pressure, and if there is high pressure, we should stop. We inject local anesthetic under direct region and observe spread of solution. This is again a technique in which we can see where our solution is going. We use interfacial plane to avoid direct contact of needle with syphilis nerve. Intraoperative monitoring and care. We brief all details of the blog to the patient before starting the procedure. We apply full standard monitoring as for general anesthesia throughout the procedure. We avoid hypothermia and use full body bear hugger. We test motor and sensory block before tourniquet and incision. We isolate the limb by full screen. Pseudoanalgesia can be given but better after confirmation of the blog. Pseudoanalgesia can mask signs of local anesthetic systemic toxicity. We monitor loss of local anesthetic systemic toxicity and always keep in hand rapid emulsion in OR and recovery. Alternatively, we maintain close verbal communication with the patient to identify local anesthetic systemic toxicity. In case of inadequate blood, we are ready to convert the patient into general anesthesia. Post-operative care. After finishing procedure, we gently shift the patient to post anesthesia care unit. Again, apply all monitors and again we look for the signs of local anesthetic systemic toxicity. We inform patient about approximate time of return of sensation. We prescribe analgesia IV or oral in advance when block wears off. We exchange cell phone contacts to assist in case of problem or queries. Early mobility is possible, uh, early resumption of food and drink is allowed, early pain free physiotherapy is possible, clinical tips of the adductor canal block. Sonotomy should be performed before practical conduct of the block. The operator should work from the same side of the block. We put ultrasound machine on control lateral side. Always give support the probe and hand. Confirm orientation of needle with the ultrasound probe. In plane technique is usually used and out of plane is also good. Colored apparel can be used to avoid femoral vessel puncture. Optimal volume is 10 ml. Higher volumes of 15 to 20 ml may be used. But in case of higher volume, if we are in the upper one third of the canal and use high volume, the block is converted into femoral triangle block. If we are giving 15 to 20 ml in the lower part of the adductor canal, the block is converted into popliteal fossa block or sciatic nerve block. Nowadays, we are using double block 5 ml in the first part and 5 ml in the third part of the adductor canal to avoid blocking the muscular branches. Adductor canal structure should be displaced on injection of local anesthetic. We don't move the needle until full needle is visible and with bevel cut. We avoid intravascular injection by aspiration each time we inject. We avoid intranormal injection by a few techniques which are already discussed. Thanks.